Good evening. Tonight you are joining us from West Point, Nebraska, St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We will be uh, delivering our midweek Lenten service. I am Chris Schiller, current elder, along with our Congregational Vice Chairman, Bill McAllister. We are bringing you this service from St. Paul Lutheran Church in West Point, Nebraska. During this time of the coronavirus, we're reaching out to you in new ways, from our website, Facebook, YouTube, email, and phone. We, are, we will keep trying to do new things in the coming weeks. Please call the church office, 402-372-2111, to get updates on where to find us on the web. However, all of these new ways to communicate can never take place of seeing you in church. Let's pray together that we can all meet together again soon. Our service will begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Psalm 107, 28-32 Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought to them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works, for the children of man. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of of the elders. A reading from Isaiah chapter 43, selected verses. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, he formed, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, I have not redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, O Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. Everyone who is called my name, whom I created for my glory, whom for I formed and made. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The next reading is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him, they took him with in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. A great windstorm ro arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep, on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care what, what, that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the sea and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with a great fear, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey? 
O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We'll now receive our message this evening from our Vice Chairman, Mr. McAllister. Thank you. This year's um, Lenten theme was 2020 Vision, uh, our eyes on Jesus, the things we see and the things we don't see. Our first week, we talked about misjudging eyes, how we misjudge others and how we can misjudge ourselves. And then we looked at the eye of the storm and how Peter found himself in the eye of the storm with his denial. Um, Jesus restored him and he'll restore us. Following that was worldly eyes. We looked at a worldview versus a biblical view. And in Jesus' silence before Pilate, he cried out, crucify me. And that was a biblical view. Last week we looked at the wandering eyes. And we looked at the prodigal son and how he wandered off into the distant country, um, had an aha moment with an awakening, uh, brutal honesty with himself, and then he took action. And tonight, we're going to wrap that up and we're going to look at more than meets the eyes, grace. The first four weeks were predominantly about forgiveness of others. Tonight, as we look at grace, we're going to look at forgiveness of ourselves. In 1519, Hernando Cortez, he was a conqueror from Spain, and there was a great treasure in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, uh, worth millions and millions of dollars. So he gathered 500 soldiers, 100 sailors, 16 horses, and boarded 11 ships, and they headed for Mexico. Now, there was some complaining and stuff on the, on the tri trip because it was crowded and dirty. Uh, the food wasn't great. But when they finally got to the shores of Yucatan, they unloaded and they were on the shores and, and they were practicing their battle strategies. Every day, Hernando Cortez would give them pep talks and get, paint this vision of what their life would be like once they got the treasure. And he was a little bit surprised when the men were complaining, all they wanted to do was go back to the dirty ships. Well, the day that they were planning the battle, he, he pulled all the men together, and they thought it was for a pep talk. And he said something that changed everything. He looked out to the sea where the boats were, and he said, burn the boats. The men kind of looked at him. And he said, if we're going home, we're going to take their boats. And that's what they did. They went out and they lit all 11 ships on fire. He kind of sent the message that, hey, it's win, take the treasure, or die. It was amazing how motivated they were. And in the first time in 600 years, they captured the treasure. And sure enough, they did return to Spain in Mexico's boats with the treasure. Why do I share that story? We all have boats that we need to burn. Our boats of worry, our boats of our, of our past, the baggage that we carry, our, our, our money, our security and our money and our worries. We cling to what we know, the comfortable, there's a, there's a piece of land that runs between Uganda and Kenya in Africa. You actually have to go out of customs, go about 200 meters, and then go through customs again. And it runs the whole length of the two countries. And in this area, it is chaos. There is no law. People just live there in complete chaos. And, and you wonder why they wouldn't go in to one of the countries where... There's some, some organization, some stability. But people would rather live in that chaos because that's what they're comfortable with. In Scripture, we see uh, people that aren't willing uh, to burn their boats. In Genesis, Lot's wife, when they're leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, they were given strict instructions, don't look back. But Lot's wife couldn't resist. She looked back 
and there she became a pillar of salt. In a personal story, my sister, six months ago, passed away. She was addicted to opiate drugs. She was on it for 10 to 12 years. And she would go to AA and CR and all these programs to help her. But the truth was, she couldn't let go of her past. Now, in the Lutheran church, we're pretty fortunate that most sermons or messages have law and gospel. But before we can collide with God's grace, we typically collide with the truth of our sins. That temper that you have just kind of keeps everybody on edge around the house. Maybe the drinking is getting a little out of control. You're choosing living with a boyfriend or girlfriend over Christ or the debt that we buy things for comfort and we buy things with money we don't have to impress people we really don't care about. Last week when I talked about AHA, that book by Kyle Eidelman, I've read three of his books. Um, on a whim, I sent him an email and just said, hey, thank you, I appreciate your books. Two weeks later, I got another book in the mail from him. Didn't ask for it, he just sent it to me. Opened up the inside cover, and it said, to Bill, Hebrews 12, 15. So I looked up the verse, and it said, be sure no one misses the grace of God. See, we have this internal scale in our head. It's a sin meter. And we like to plot people on this meter. It's a vertical scale. And we know people that maybe, uh, maybe it's a pastor who seemed to be more spiritual than we are. And we can always find somebody below us. And we, that comparison thing gets us in trouble. But the Apostle Paul, the leading author of the New Testament, his words were, I am the chief of sinners. He put himself at the bottom of the scale. Because the only comparison is Jesus Christ. And we're all here, and he's up here. See, if we think we're not that bad, grace doesn't look that good. Burning our bows is about forgiving others, but it's also about forgiving ourselves and our past and being able to move forward. And let's look at those boats that we cling to in light of some scripture. Several promises. In Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is always with you. Or Matthew 11. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Are we tired of lugging around the baggage that we have? In 1 John it says, If we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will cleanse us from all of our sins. Let us not let uh, our guilt and our pride get in the way of our confession. In 2 Corinthians it tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. It's not reformed, rehabilitated. We are recreated in Christ. In John 10, it tells us, The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give us life and to give it abundantly. We're just waiting for the good stuff. In Philippians 13, it says, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me, and I press on to the goal that God has put forth for me. In Romans 1, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We're free. John 8 says, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
Now let me be clear, this is not a prosperity gospel. This isn't name it and claim it. This is about forgiving ourselves, forgiving others, so we can move forward. Our gospel reading tonight, uh, Mark 4, the, the disciples are in a boat in a terrible storm, and they're scared. And to the point, and these are fishermen, but they wake up Jesus. And they ask, don't you care that we're going to drown? Jesus wakes up. And he says, peace. Be still. And the waves and the wind calm. And he asked them, why are you so afraid? I am with you. That's my emphasis. See, the disciples were in a small fishing boat with Jesus and they were afraid. Compare that to the 3,300 people that were on the Titanic and they felt safe and secure. There's a pastor in Ireland, Robert Morgan, Belfast, Ireland. On that Titanic, he had 16 men on that ship from his congregations. They all worked as mechanics. They all perished. And his small congregation was reeling. They were, they were having a difficult time, and he penned this, and I quote, Friends, there has only been one unsinkable ship. It was that tiny boat occupied by our slumbering Savior. We will meet winds and waves, and we will even go underwater. But baptized and beloved children, it does not matter the storms you are in. It matters whose boat you're in. And there are winds, and there are waves, and there are storms. But you're in a vessel, captain, by Jesus. Last week at school, I was talking to some of our custodians, and one of them said, well, my sister said this coronavirus thing is because God is mad at us. And I, I felt sorry for her a little bit because our storms are not the gauge of Jesus. The cross is. See, God doesn't punish us for our sins. He punished Christ. Grace. More than meets the eye. In closing, let's be reminded of God's value that he has on us. And Chris read it earlier in Isaiah 43. And now the Lord says, He who created Jacob, who formed Israel, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you walk through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers, you won't drown. When you walk through the fires, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I will give countries for you, since you are precious and honored in my sight. And because I love you. Grace, God's redemption at Christ's expense. In today's scripture reading, Christ uh, used three words. Peace, be still. The disciples were amazed. What was more amazing, Christ used those words when he was in front of Pilate. He was quiet and he was still. And if you're wondering where your salvation is and your forgiveness... Let's look at Christ's last three words that he said to us on the cross. It is finished. Amen. Normally at this time in the service is when we give our offering. So I would encourage all of us uh, to continue to uh, celebrate that in our giving. And you can drop those off to the church. You can mail them in. Um, but the church keeps going. Uh, so we do uh, appreciate and, and need your gifts. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. McAllister, for that wonderful message. Uh, a lot of good, uh, a lot of good pieces in there tonight for us all to uh, to use in this time of the of the headwinds and the windstorms. So, our service will continue with our prayers. Gracious Father in heaven, you 
your son taught us to be anxious about nothing and to let the day's cares be sufficient for the day. These days have been hard and full of anxiety. Still our minds and our hearts, we pray. Grant us nights of restful sleep and refreshment. Watch over us, our families, our neighbors, and communities. All first responders, medical personnel, our military, our nation, and all of the nations of the world. Preverza, prever, preserve us from discord and strife. Endow our leaders with the wisdom and sound judgment. Protect us from evil, every evil of the body and soul. And remind us of your good and gracious will to save and to bless. We ask that you grant healing according to your will to all of those suffering from health issues, especially those we remember, Nadine, Elizabeth, Kathy, Jessica, Brody, Jennifer, Kristen, and Cammie. Father, we ask specially to grant comfort and strength to those who have lost loved ones during this time. We remember now the family of Lester Schlecht, who died on Sunday, March 29th. Be with pastors and missionaries and all who spread the good news of the gospel in all the world. As you have reconciled the world and all of the things to yourself in the death of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, so grant to us all a measure of your peace. Grant these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Collects. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Lord Jesus Christ, the devil, the world, and our sinful nature constantly lead us to worldliness. Forgive our worldly sins and grant us the gift of the heavenly mindedness so that we might live in the world a while, not being of the world. For you live and reign in the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In your precious and heavenly name. Amen.